joined in studio by the Minister of Transport, Dipur Peters. Thank you, Minister, for joining us on the PM News Desk. Well, not a grand start to the festive season on our roads. Tell us about this year's road safety measures. It is really uh, painful because it's not a good start, mm. especially in this time when we have just emerged out of a uh, more than 10 days of mourning to have so many people already who have perished on the roads. And I just want to indicate that this time around, what we have also done is to call on the religious and faith-based organizations to join us in appealing and speaking and praying in the various places where they gather. Is it under a tree? Is it in a shack? Is it in a big uh, gathering of thousands of people? We want every South African to focus on praying for safety on our roads, in particular for pr mm. our pedestrians, in particular for our motorists who drive these particular times, rushing to get home to see family and friends and relatives that they have not seen in many months, mm. and they would want to be with them over the festive period, only to find that they will be a body in a coffin. So I also want to say that it is important that we actually emphasize that we don't mince our words when we say visible policing. Like you have seen all the nine provinces, there are roadblocks all over working together with the police and other law enforcement agencies to augment on the shortages that we have from the traffic uh, site. We are also saying that it is important that even those who travel internationally, like for example, into the region of SADC, who go through the borders of South Africa, we make sure that our borders are sealed so as to make sure that vehicles that are not roadworthy don't cross over into other countries. Equally so, ro ro unroadworthy vehicles from other countries don't cross over into South Africa. We believe that it is important that we work together as South Africans, but we cannot keep quiet when people deliberately violate the rules and laws of the road. People speed, people drive unroadworthy vehicles, people drink and drive. I am saying that it is important that we work together and I'm happy that out of the road safety summit of October there was a recommendation and a resolution that said we need to deal with the alcohol limit. We are targeting zero tolerance. Now it is still the, within the rules. We're saying that we would want to make sure that we change the law so that we don't allow people to drink and drive on South African roads. And we also want to encourage our people rest is very important a person who is tired and driving is as dangerous as a person who is drunk so we want to say to you make sure that you rest those two hours every now and then but also every 200 kilometers you give yourself time to rest and stretch your legs uh, that is in the interest of yourselves and your family yes minister if i can get in there where are we in terms of the speed governing devices for public transport vehicles and of course the forced resting period for drivers we have passed the, the regulations now early, early December and we, I, I want to say to you that the law enforcement agencies are already using those regulations to make sure that they can be able to enforce them. But remember, we also need to work together with the fleet owners and the vehicle owners because many of the vehicles need to be ret uh, retrofitted mm -hmm. to fit in the gadget that will govern the speed. So as to make sure that when the driver has driven for a particular distance, you can be able to pick up whether the driver has been able to drive according to the limit, but also whether the driver has been able to create speed. But we have also introduced regulations for child restraint. You know that when you buy vehicles, there is options and extras that people choose. Very expensive, Mac wheels and um, sound systems and all those. But we believe to save the lives of our children, who are not actually the drivers, we need to make sure that each, each and every vehicle is fitted with a child restraint, yes. especially for children under 10. Yes. That is one of the regulations we have just passed. We're also talking about breathalyzers. Mm. We have brought back the breathalyzer so that the, the, the traffic enforcers as well as the police could be able to make sure that they, they, they can test people for, for, for drunken driving. But also say that it is important that with our tavern owners but also taxi associations we can then be able to do the testing and give the power to the individual to the associations also to be in control and I'm happy with the Santaco uh, campaign mm -hmm. of Tokomela where they make sure that no taxi will leave the taxi rank if it is not according to the, the standards but also that the drivers and the queue marshals need to be trained and 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 be ready to, to make sure what that is the status of the Moloto Road corridor project uh, at this point what has government done since the November 11th carnage. 
What we have done, you would remember that we did give an indication that actually on that particular day of mm. the 11th of November, that was the day the steering committee was meeting. Mm. The steering committee reported to us on the 18th as the ministers who are in the political oversight committee. We have identified the rapid rail network as the best option because the Moloto Road, if you go to the north, is the second with the highest volumes of traffic, with the number of trucks and all those. So the rail uh, network is important because there are 38,000 people that are being transported daily. But on Minister, that the rapid rail project was approved six years ago. What's stalling the process? Why hasn't it been implemented thus far? I've given an indication of the challenges that have mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. been there. And myself and the Premier of Mpumalanga mm -hmm. have taken it upon ourselves. We are going to champion this program. Mm -hmm. We are going to make sure that it does happen. That's why I'm giving you the latest update. Mm -hmm. But we have also realized that whilst we're working towards the rail mm -hmm. option, the road itself, there's engineering components that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Working together with Sandra, mm -hmm. we would be looking at making sure that the issues related to the expansion of the road, the shoulders, and all the those rutting services, mm. the geometric uh, arrangement and designs. We address the road as a 20-year plan and we're looking at making it possible that we've got the resources. We kick in immediately. Also making sure that there is particular uh, uh, increase. Like for example, the road was designed for 100 to, to I mean 80 to 100 kilometers per hour. But people drive 100 to 120 mm. kilometers per hour. So we also need to increase its capacity and strengthen its, its ability to, to absorb that. But we're saying that would be in the interim measures that we do. But also the important thing that emerged out of the political oversight committee meeting yes. is the fact that the initial decision that was taken where the rail network was going to be laid out the communities had occupied that particular area. We have now taken a decision. So do you have plans to relocate yeah. those communities? No, no, no. We, what we are happen? going to do, because of the need now mm. to consider an alternative option, mm. we are calling on the Minister of Land uh, uh, Reform mm -hmm. to make sure that they put a moratorium. The municipalities, the district, as well as the province and national would not develop anything in that corridor that has been set aside. And we also would want to appeal to our communities. When you see land being cleared know that there's development coming you can't come in and occupy yes. it we are also saying we have started seeing people on that road the number of taverns we are appealing to the emissaries for economic development in the way they license liquor outlets they cannot be allowing people on the national roads or on that uh, r 573 to be I mean, it's a community. Yes. The road runs yes. through a community. Minister, I want and to talk quickly about the Fields sides. Hill crash in Pinetown, Durban. We know now that trucks weighing more than 16 tons have been banned from that road. Why did you wait so long to act? You remember that out of that uh, I mean, this crash, disaster could have yes. been averted if we had acted sooner. But after the crash, remember, mm. I did make an uh, announcement that mm. the province, together with the municipality of Etequini and National, will be doing a study on what needs to be done and make the recommendation. The recommendation has been made and action has been taken. Mm. So I think we should actually look forward and say, now that that uh, 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 incident has led to our ability to work together mm. as the three spheres of government, because that for us is the importance of making it possible that also with the fleet owners, because remember, you cannot just all over close the roads. You mm. need particular interventions. And we have also realized that some of the trucks driving on our roads, they are supposed to have been on the freeway. They didn't go to the freeway, dodging the, the tolls and going to, to, mm. to the site. Your to message quickly, Minister, to motorists out there this year? I just want to say to South Africans, mm. it is our responsibilities as individuals, first and foremost, to make sure that we stay alive and we stay and we keep ourselves safe on the roads, but also passengers, make sure that you get into a vehicle that is roadworthy. Make sure that the driver adhere to the, to the rules. Make sure that you keep the numbers of the officers that you need to call, the hotlines to call if you find something wrong. But importantly, let us make sure that we rest, we don't drink and drive, we make it possible that we arrive at the point of meeting our loved ones in one piece. No one wants to cry over anybody, especially with vehicles that is supposed to transport you to your point of connection with family or for fellowship or for having a, a very good time. Thank you, Minister. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. That was Transport Minister Dipo Peters.